We have Camilo Pane, who used to be the CEO of one of the largest global consumer goods or luxury, how would you say it? Like beauty, beauty products, yeah, Koti. Yeah. Names. Great Give us, seeing you. Thank you very much for joining thank, us. Thank We tried you. many years. Thanks for inviting me. Because consumer goods is, at the end of the day, what probably matters to us the most. Because they are like the accessories of the daily life. And you know, as a person who spent 25 years of his career in internet, I came to the conclusion, there's something wrong in the world. How can it be that the highest valued companies of the world are actually just distribution partners, while the underlying products are getting, yeah, I would say, uh, taken into very difficult places through these platforms. Mm -hmm. and, and we as NOAA, we're opening ourselves up to consumer goods. And actually, we invested in a sneaker company, this one, because we believe what matters in the end is product. Mm -hmm. And when you can be a small consumer goods company anywhere in the world, in Thailand, you can sell 24-7 globally. So at the end of the day, it probably comes all back to product. And we are just in a period of glorification or glorification of distribution. But what do you think of that? Well, I, first, uh, uh, you know, I, I agree with you that what it matters at the end is products. I kept being asked all the time uh, the difference between large brands and small brands, so all the disruption that is happening uh, with the small brands versus the, the large incumbent ones. And clearly, I manage a lot of the incumbent ones and the big ones. And uh, my answer is... Can you say about Koti just for Well, as, 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 as the third largest uh, beauty company in the world, so after the, the L'Oreal and Estee Lauder, Clearly, I'm not there anymore, so I left 10 months ago. I just want to clarify. I'm going to talk about my history and my career. But uh, Bacotti owns uh, three divisions, so luxury, consumer beauty, and professionals. In the luxury, there are uh, very well-known uh, perfume and fragrance brands, uh, skincare brands like uh, Gucci, Marc Jacobs, uh, Barbary, you know, uh, 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 Bottega Veneta, Calvin Klein, and many others. I think out of the three you mentioned, you're probably the most up- or yeah, Coty is the most upmarket one, right? Um, the, the, out of the three, the luxury clearly is the one with the highest pricing. Is also the one that is uh, performing very well. This is a licensed brand business, so it's an interesting business model because clearly uh, the company doesn't own the brand. The brands are owned by the fashion houses, so you gotta or or the owners of the brand. In some cases, even jewelry houses like Tiffany, for example. And, um, and so the company needs to have a lot of capabilities in working together with the, with the mother house uh, in how you manage the brand. Because at the end of the day, the brands and the products, which were you were man mentioning at the beginning, is, uh, is the most important thing. And yes. really, what, what you, you know, how we're going to delight consumers uh, with, with the great consumer experience. So how is Koti uh, selling today? What's the uh, online share? Well, look, uh, it depends on the division. In luxury, I remember when I joined the company in 2015, there was one very senior person who who told me that fragrance uh, uh, would have not sold online because just you can smell it. <laughs> and, uh, and I can tell you that even this paradigm got changed over time because now there is, uh, you know, between 10 and 15 percent of all fragrances which yeah. are sold online. And I haven't changed online. my order to let since I'm 18, so clearly, I know how it smells. I just hunt for good price. And uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons. The second one is, uh, you, know, the, you know, there is an inherent level of loyalty in, in fragrance, yes. in perfumes, because once you really have your signature, your fragrance, the one you like, the one that represents you, um, you know, it's you're not going to change. Now, of course, you are one part of the consumers. You represent one consumer segment, but there are also the other ones uh, who are very curious. So they look for innovation, for new things all the time. And those are the ones where clearly an omni-channel experience is so important because uh, you want to just be offline to align and, uh, you know, uh, 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 offline to align, online to offline. And, uh, and that's why you do see all the big animation, the big launches, uh, which are, uh, uh, um, you know, airports and big department stores because it's so important that you get, you know, at the end of the day, the first reason why I buy perfume will continue to be the note, the fragrance even before the brand, the packaging, the bottle, and how it looks or how it's called, and clearly the advertising that entices you to, to try the brand. So clearly trying the product is important. But at the same time, this is a category with uh, you know, between 30 and 40% loyalty. 
you are part of that 30-40% who always Very buys annoying. the same perfume yeah. and you know never changes. No, no, I, try, I try, of course. Of course, you try new stuff, but your main consumption is 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 through that. Um, I would tell you, you know, uh, in the company that I used to manage uh, in in the luxury area, it was around 10% of uh, of uh, sales of net revenue sold online and that this went through third party platforms or it um, went proprietary uh, um uh, the majority went through third party platforms and uh, and it's uh, this is an area where as a company in general as a luxury company you always got to be careful because uh, what is important is also the consumer experience how yeah. consumer interact with your with your brand i don't know if you are aware but Cody, uh, uh, was behind a major uh, european court of justice ruling in 2017 that really went in favor of the luxury companies in this case was Cody to initiate this but clearly he helped the entire industry because uh, it, it just uh, allowed the company to restrict the distribution based on the quality. So distributors couldn't go and sell to any platform the way they wanted. Now, of course, it's not really, you know, uh, you it's can still enforced. find it's not enforced, but there is a rule that allows company to clearly having a, a specific uh, 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 type of discussion with the distributors to make sure that the quality and out of execution uh, is made on the, these different platforms is, uh, is respected. Otherwise, you can just shut down, you can clearly close the distributor, right? So what, what issue you uh, face with brand uh, yeah, violations or copying of product, especially in the fashion industry, I get more and more complaints yeah. that Alibaba and Amazon have a lot of yeah, pirated there are, there products. There are, without any doubt. I think it's more pronounced in fashion than in beauty. In beauty, but it is also uh, uh, an issue that uh, exists in beauty as well. I think all companies, especially the luxury ones, are just getting uh, more sophisticated in, in, uh, in clearly having all the different technology applied on the bottle, including the batch tracing, right. uh, the different ways to figure out if, uh, if the product is, uh, is real or not. I have to tell you, this is not yet uh, it's not an, an issue. issue. You no, know, it's, it's, it's growing, uh, but it's not the same that in fashion. I think in beauty, you still have certain uh, um, you know, barriers, especially in perfume, to really replicate the note of the fragrance. This Not is that a, easy. It's a sophisticated, it's a, it's a way, like it's a, a secret, sophisticated secret process. Sauce. That's why you have uh, fragrance houses, which yeah. are very large companies like Givaudan or Fermanish or IFF, who are very big multinational. This, right. each, each of these three companies has billions and billions of revenues. Who knows how to make perfumes, right? So Europeans are known to create high-end luxury consumer goods. Mm -hmm. We know from the entertainment industry that Amazon and Netflix are now, yeah, I think, accounted for like two-thirds of the movie budgets. Um, they are like mm -hmm. the most aggressive. Could you see that the big platforms, Amazon and Alibaba, are going to employ our European designers, our consume good R&D people and go similar routes to offer direct products? Um, Amazon has already started to do it in cosmetics. They launched their own line of, uh, of cosmetics, meaning makeup. So clearly they have already venturing into this, into this area. Um, Alibaba, I don't think they've done it, but clearly they have an amazing platform. You can create anything in a matter of minutes or hours, not even, not even in days. Um, you know, I think there is an element of emotional connection, beauty like fashion. It, it, there is a lot of emotional connection between the brand and the consumers. So I think there are some hurdles for brands uh, like the, the, the brand owned by Amazon. But isn't that the issue? Amazon. You say there is an emotional connection between the consumer and the brand. Yeah. But the brand is kind of, like, yeah, it's like a concept, right? You have very little, or you used to have, I guess, very little direct customer relationships, the same issues of the car manufacturers, the watch manufacturers. Do you, do you believe that there is an ambition in the consumer goods industry to get closer to the customer? There, there is, in my opinion. Is it working? The point is, it's not necessarily working because I think... Uh, uh, but uh, you know, I don't think it's working because the big platforms clearly are, are dominating at the moment the direct relationship. But I'm a believer that you gotta own your relationship with the consumers, and that's why you see mono brand stores opening up on on a lot of uh, the co cosmetic brands, for example, because that allows same you direct in the watch relationship. Industry. Same in the watch industry, and I think uh, uh, you know more and more brands will build their own. Uh, uh, own brand platform or D2C platforms because uh, owning, owning that relationship is going to be the key to be a bit isolated by the marketplaces without any doubt.
Why is there not an Amazon of luxury? Um, is it because I think uh, I think um, I don't. I maybe can't. Amazon I, is the Amazon I, of luxury. No, no, no. <laughs> I think um, I really can can speak on on their behalf. But if I if I refer to a lot of the conversation that we had, that clearly they have the desire to understand how to deal with luxury brands. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's a matter of capability, it's a matter of consumer experience. And uh, I can tell you that uh, the moment that they will figure out how to give a different experience, uh, uh, you, know, you know, some of the brands or a lot of the brands will definitely open up to the platform at the moment. And I'm talking about the high end, uh, you know, the luxury, the high end luxury brands. At the moment, clearly, the experience uh, <coughs> is not. It's amazing, no? These companies like Uber, Amazon, and eBay in the past, you would think the product gets better and easier, but I think the issue is once you are having an R&D team and they always have to come up with new gimmicks, these features are making it more complex. No, Amazon looks very much like eBay now in terms of the, the buying process. It has to be more emotional, I guess, no? I think it's, it's, it's an For amazing luxury. platform. We all know that the consumer convenience, I mean, you can find everything. I mean, I'm not talking about Amazon now, but, uh, but the consumer experience from a luxury yeah. point of view is not, uh, is not there. And that's why you don't see a consistent execution. And that's why a lot of the company don't sell luxury brands straight to Amazon. Yes. And if they reach there, they go through distributors and other different resellers, right? Yeah. I think there's a growing population of consumer goods companies who are actually intentionally not on Amazon. Quite a few are trying to keep that away from the big platforms. Uh, I think it happens all the time when you have large platforms. I'm sure it's the same with Uber and then, you know, yes. you, you really have, you know, you, you get, I guess, uh, as a consumers that are a part of consumers uh, who do believe that it's better to go and look for different sources yes. and maybe support local bases or whatever yes. it is. Yes. Uh, uh, there are these, these, these trends. But without any doubt, uh, those platforms, this platform you're mentioning, have changed our life and, uh, and uh, you know, they bring a lot of convenience and value to consumers. Yes. They bring transparency as well, right? I mean, we do see, we can compare, we do yeah. see what's going on. But on then you have this whole direct to consumer trend with, uh, I think, the shaving company started. And yeah. Uh, that is that is a very interesting model. I think there you have the direct to consumers. You're talking about Dollar Shave Club or yes. Harris and so on. You do have uh, I know those business models quite well, having worked in the industry. Is that the, the future industry. of the consumer goods industry? I'm not sure it's it's the future, but uh, this is a different type of of convenience. Here, there you have the subscription model, and I think the subscription model in specific categories. Uh, like makes a lot work, of sense, right? Eh? Perfume, like uh, order to let you could, know. Could could be, yeah. I mean, um, that's a customer I'm, I'm relationships. The, there is a customer keep, relationship. Right? There is a continuity. There is a there is a routine element. And as we said before, because of the uh, loyalty rate, the repeat rate in this specific categories could work. But when you look at razors, so when you look at uh, skincare, for example, which is a regime type of category where people really uh, need to repeat the regime to really get the ultimate results, then subscription models, in my opinion, are very, very interesting model. They take another element of, uh, of uh, concern out of the consumer path, part, path to purchase because uh, you know you're going to have it at your house all the time when you need it, and that's another problem less. The issue is that there are so many that it can become overwhelming, I think, with, with Well, with that's consumers. the issue also on Amazon, right? They have like a billion SKUs, but they don't help you what to buy. Yeah, yeah I the think... The curation part in consumer goods, uh, we see it the, everywhere. The curation is, part is... is growing uh, big time. Yeah, but it still remains the place where you, in general, in consumer goods, I'm not talking about luxury anymore, uh, it still remains a place where you get all the information, where you can compare the brands, you can look at the reviews, uh, you have a good feeling about the type of value you're getting from a price point of view. So overall, uh, you know, that's why you have all, they're very successful. So. What are you spending your time on after being the um, CEO? What's uh, up for you now? Uh, in lots of interesting things, but uh, I'm, I'm working with a few startups and, and helping them to, you know. Mostly DTC? Um, I would say most, mo mostly D2C, yeah, but they're interesting, uh, you know, amazing founders with a great story behind. And, uh, you, you advise know, them to also be in offline? You said earlier hybrid omnichannel is so important. In certain categories, it is, it is yes. really important. If you saw this in watch finder, if, for example. In certain categories, uh, I do important. believe that the path is, is the offline to offline, yes. on online to offline and vice versa. Uh, in certain others, you can keep building amazing brands, D2C, and, and keep owning absolutely the relationship with the, with the consumers. It depends on the, on the We are launching category. for our Berlin conference next year a consumer goods hall. 
together mm -hmm. with Born, JC Chopin, and we're using it for product launches. It's like a Colosseum. So uh, we are very excited about consumer goods. I, I believe it's very interesting to find the right product for the right use at the right price. And this curation aspect, I think, is not happening at the moment. It's, it's, no, that is, that is blurred by. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, that's why it's beautiful. I mean, there is yes. a lot of opportunities ahead of us, right? So. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Camille. Thank you very much, Marco. Appreciate, appreciate it. Soon, Thank yeah. you. Bye.